The Firebird has been described as the greatest piece that Rimsky-Korsakov never wrote because it clearly defines the moment when his young and relatively inexperienced composition student Igor Stravinsky overtook his teacher by creating one of the most significant ballet scores of the 20th century. Paris was gripped by an ace troupe of Russian dancers, the Ballet Russe. They were promoted by Serge Diaghilev and they were the hottest ticket in town with a buzz only comparable to a West End show or a Broadway musical. Diaghilev commissioned the unknown 26-year-old Stravinsky to compose the score for The Firebird and it was an instant success, marking the beginning of one of the most fruitful creative collaborations ever. Although designed as a ballet, the music is so finely crafted that it works just as well as a concert performance without any dance. The Firebird story fuses together two Russian folk tales, the sum of which would make a blockbuster movie. The villain is an evil magician, King Kachai, who lives in a dark and mysterious world, kidnapping princesses and turning princes into stone. Stravinsky really captures Kachai's evil spirit and you can hear his menace right at the very beginning of the piece. So the orchestra begin with a sinister sounding pattern. But why does the music sound so dark? Obviously the music is very low, it's played deep down in the cellos and basses, but the main reason is that Stravinsky uses a very specific set of notes taken from the octatonic scale. This is an exotic sounding scale with its origins in 7th century Arabic music and it gets its name because it contains eight different pitches rather than the seven that you would find in a regular major or minor scale. Here's a normal major scale. And now, here's the octatonic scale with its alternating series of semitones and tones. Stravinsky uses interesting melodic ideas, like the scale, combined with extended playing techniques to create the most original textures. In the introduction, there's a wonderful moment when he asks the string section to make the most unusual sound. And if you listen to this sound in isolation, you'd swear that it was electronic. But that sound was invented almost a hundred years ago and is produced entirely by acoustic instruments. It has the rather grand title of a harmonic glissando. That means that the musicians press lightly on the strings and then slide their fingers up and down the fingerboard to create the most amazing sound. What follows is one of the many examples of transformation in Stravinsky's music. Remember the sinister phrase we met right at the very beginning of the score? Well, here it is with an entirely different colour sung out by the flutes and oboes in the woodwind section. King Kachai's castle is surrounded by a huge enchanted garden. In addition to the 13 princesses he's kidnapped, he's also captured a magical creature called the Firebird. The second movement of the Firebird Suite begins with fast tremolos, with the musicians moving quickly from one note to the next, and it gives the impression that the Firebird is trapped and trying to escape. The hero of our story is a young prince called Ivan. When he sees the Firebird in Kachai's garden, he tries to catch it. Stravinsky underscores this action with some athletic music perfect for dance. The music feels entirely unpredictable as sounds leap out from all directions, then tumble downwards and race off. Not only do you hear that in the music, but you can see it clearly in the score. Ivan captures the Firebird. In return for her release, she offers him one of her magical feathers. If Ivan is ever in trouble, he need only wave the feather in the air and the Firebird will come to his rescue. The Firebird then disappears and Ivan continues his journey through the magical garden. The third movement features a beautiful melody. 
describing the 13 princesses held captive by King Kachai. Gorgeous solo lines weave through the texture for oboe, cello, clarinet and bassoon. Prince Ivan immediately falls in love with one of the princesses. The only problem is that King Kachai discovers Ivan in his garden and he sends his henchmen out to capture him. The next movement is one of the most thrilling written for orchestra and it's called The Infernal Dance of King Kachai. Now Stravinsky was a really cunning composer because the movement you've just heard was wonderful and soft, which just kind of makes this next movement all the more of a shock. The Infernal Dance is a showcase for Stravinsky's advanced orchestration techniques, but it's also a great example of a musical rondo. The theme that you've just heard returns throughout the structure of the music, but so your ears never get tired of it, Stravinsky continually changes how it's played. The henchmen capture Prince Ivan and take him to King Kachai. Sticking strictly to tradition, Ivan is about to be turned to stone but then he remembers the Firebird's magical feather. With one wave, the Firebird appears and reveals Kachai's weakness. His soul is encased in a casket, which if smashed will instantly kill him and all his wicked magic will be undone. Ivan wastes no time and fulfills his destiny to become a hero.